Good morning and welcome to Aurobindo Pharma quarter four FY twenty three earnings call. Please note that all participants' line will be on listen only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the opening remarks. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to the management for opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you, Vandit. Good morning and a warm welcome to our fourth quarter FY twenty three earnings call. I am Deepthi Thakur from the Investor Relations team. We hope you have received the quarter four FY23 financials in the press release that was sent out on Saturday. These are also available on our website. I would like to introduce my senior management team today on the call with us, represented by Dr. Satakarni Makapati, CEO of Aurobindo Biosimilars Vaccines and Peptide Businesses, Mr. Yogendra Puwala, CEO of UJ Pharma Specialties Limited, Mr. Sanjeev Dhani, CEO and Head Formulations Aurobindo Pharma Limited, Mr. Swami Ayo. CEO Aurobindo Pharma USA and Mr F Subramanian CFO We will begin the call with summary highlights from the management followed by an interactive Q&A session Please note that some of the matters we will discuss today are forward looking including and without limitations statements relating to the implementation of strategic actions and other affirmations on our future business business development and commercial performance While this forward looking statements exemplify our judgment and future expectations concerning the development of our business a number of risks uncertainties and other important factors may cause actual development and result to vary materially from our expectations Aurobindo Pharma undertakes no obligations to publicly revise any forward looking statements to reflect in future events or circumstances With that I will hand over the call to Mr S Subramanian for the highlights Over to you sir Thank you Dipti uh, good morning and welcome to all of you for joining this earnings call This year has been very challenging due to various factors namely challenging macro environment and competitive industry landscape etc Despite these issues we have delivered a good result in this fiscal year We will now discuss the results for the fourth quarter of fiscal year FY2223 declared by the company For Q4, the company registered a revenue of 6,473 crores, with an increase of 11.4 percent year on year. The EBITDA before forex and other income grew by 2.8 percent year on year and by 5 percent quarter on quarter to rupees 1,002.2 crores. EBITDA margin for the quarter was at 15.5 percent, and for the FY23 was 15.1 percent. Net profit increased by 3% quarter on quarter to rupees 505.9 crores. EBITDA margin before R&D is 21.8% for the quarter against 21.4% of the last quarter. In terms of the business breakdown, formulation business in Q4 FY23 witnessed a growth of 1.4% year on year to 5455 crores and contributed around 84.3% of the total revenue. APA business contributed around 15.7% and clocked a revenue of 1017 crores for the quarter registering a growth of 11.4% on a year on year basis led by improved demand for some of our key products for the quarter the revenue for the from the us formulation increased by 11.6% year on year to 3045 crores on a constant currency basis us revenue increased by 2% year on year This is two US dollar three hundred and seventy million dollars. We have received final approval of twenty six A and Ds and launched ten product during the quarter under review. We have filed twelve A and Ds, including three injectable during the quarter. Revenue of Arvindu Pharma, the company uh, Arvindu Pharma USA, the company making oral products in USA, has increased by one percent quarter on quarter. Revenue of US injectable business in US increased by three percent. year on year and 18% quarter on quarter to us 71.9 million in q4 fy23 the total ugs specialty sales in us including the specialty osd amounted to us dollar 81 million during the quarter 81 million during the quarter the ugs performance in various financial parameters are better than that of last quarter we have a total 171 injectable and a file as on 31st march 2023 out of which 126 have been received in final approval and remaining 45 are under review or have tentative approval the company as on 31st march 23 as 774 anda filed with the us fda on a cumulative basis 
out of which 565 are final approval and 34 having tentative approval, including A8 ANDAs, which are tentatively approved under PEP4 and balance 175 ANDAs are under review. For the quarter, US formulation clocked a revenues of rupees 1660 crores and increase of 7.7% year on year growth. In constant currency terms, Euro business clocked a revenue of Euro 188 million against Euro 183 million of last year for Q4. For the quarter, growth market revenue increased by 18.6% quarter on quarter and witnessing a growth of 51.2% year on year to rupees 592 per crores. This includes PLI incentive of rupees 48 crores against 8 crores of the last quarter due to improved sales of eligible products during the quarter. For the quarter, ERV formulation business clocked a revenue of 159.3 crores year as a whole. We reached an amount of US dollar 119 million against an estimate of US dollar 120 million. R&D expenditure is at 411.7 crore during the quarter, which is 6.3% of the revenue. This is similar to last quarter R&D expenditure of rupees 415 crores. The average raw material cost remained flat, mar stroke marginal decreased during the quarter, and the freight cost also decreased, uh, reduced during the quarter. Net capex for the quarter is around US dollar 105 million, of which capex for existing business is 62 million, including US dollar 14 million for ONDA purchases. PLA capex of 31 million dollars, and capex for new business for new markets amounts to US dollar 12 million. The PLA cumulative capex till date till March 23 amounts to US dollar 121 million. The average FX rate was 82.1936 in Q4 FY23 against 82.10 of Q3 FY23. The average finance cost for FY23 was at 4% mainly due to availing multiple currency loan. We have clocked an income of, from investment of rupees 74 crore for the quarter and cumulatively it is 148 crore for the year. This is this is accounted in other income. This needs to be read in conjunction along with the finance charges. The business generated a free cash flow of US dollar 61 million during the quarter. As a result of strong cash flow generated during the quarter, the net cash position, including investments at the end of March 2023, was at $194 million. The gross debt is $591.7 million. Our endeavor is to bring down the debt going forward. The high cash was due to some good collections in the month of March 23 by the U.S. business board composition. During the quarter, we have inducted one new independent director in the parent company and one new independent director in Apitoria Pharma, the API arm of the company. With this, the total number of independent directors in the company is now five out of total ten directors. Also, we have appointed CEO for the API on Apitoria. We will be appointing one more new independent director in Apitoria. Facility status. Out of the total eight US FDA regulated API units, six units got have VAI status. One unit recently got inspected. Earlier it was in VAI status. And the balance one is under warning letter. We are putting our efforts to get it clear. All the total 11 US FDA approved FDA, FDF units are under VAI status as on date. Major plans under commissioning. We have three plans, including one UGI plant under commissioning in US. Of this part of the rally facility was commissioned in March 23. The balance is expected to get commissioned by FY23 in or during FY25. The China plant is fully installed and is expected to be commissioned in Q1 FY25. We are in the process of manufacturing the exhibit batches. The LIFAS plan, which will produce a PENGI, is expected to be commissioned by 23. However, it is our endeavor to complete ahead of the schedule. We are conducting clinical research studies phase 3 for biosimilar product, and the biosimilar plant is expected to commission by FY23. So far, including the R&D revenue expenditure in biosimilars, we had invested more than 1,900 crores on biosimilars till date. Outlook. While our financial performance FY23 indicates our resilience to withstand economic adversity on the back of our strong fundamentals, we remain focused on continuing our growth, and we are cautiously optimistic on the business growth going forward. We are committed to deliver good performance in the coming quarters while adhering to the regulatory and quality standards.
Some of the key focus area for the coming quarters are summarized as below. PLI implementation will be as per schedule as uh, informed earlier. Post PLI implementation by March 24, most of the major capex will be done. To improve the capacity utilization across the plant, we may be doing some debottlenecking and the maintenance care. We will continue to acquire ANDS through market authorizations to leverage the existing capacity and our resources. Our differentiated business biosimilar is expected to contribute to margin enhancements from FY25. New pipeline of approvals will include high margin, new high margin, new generation product category like peptide bio, peptide biosimilars, etc. Pricing of stabilized in the US and there is price normalcy in the market in US. Both the RM cost and logistic cost have reduced during the quarter. Overall resulting in emanating a better business situation for the coming year. UJ continues to do well and achieve various financial parameters which are better than those of the last quarter. We expect to continue this. We expect to see some good cash generation from FY27 onwards after capitalizing all the assets which have been enumerated above. This is all from our end and my colleagues will give a better clarity more on it in our Q&A session. We are happy to take your questions now. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to take, anyone who wishes to ask questions may raise your hand from the participant tab on your screen. Participants are requested to use headphones or earphones while asking a question. The first question is from Damian Tikirai. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is on your uh, generic injectable portfolio. Uh, for the U.S., we have been uh, seeing sales hovering in somewhere 70, 75 million a quarter. And uh, similarly, branded oncology sales uh, is hovering somewhere around uh, 30 million in last few quarters. So how do you uh, see these uh, injectable sales picking up ahead, given uh, the approval rate is uh, very healthy? And uh, if you can say, like, you'll be achieving your guidance uh, provided earlier uh, with this kind of run rate or you see pick up ahead. Hi, hi Dabiyanti. Yeah, in fact, like, I stick to my earlier guidance of double-digit growth. And as you rightly said, uh, we are doing uh, as per our plan. And uh, we will be continuing our journey with a double-digit growth. And uh, on back of uh, healthy approvals, we feel that uh, it is achievable. And that's on the generic injectable side. Uh, in case, Swami, if you want to address on branded injectables. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Damanti, this is Swami. I hear from uh, US. Um, so on the branded injectables, that's uh, Acrotech. Um, you know, these are assets that we acquired from Spectrum. And uh, we have a larger plan here to... Um, market other products too. We are in the process of uh, um, getting into, I mean, we have got into business development deals with uh, a couple of uh, other companies and this could uh, take some time. But right now we are looking at uh, maintaining this kind of revenue line at about 25, 30 million a quarter. Okay. So, so you, you already have some uh products which you have identified which will be part of a portfolio ahead and then uh, you might see pick up uh, from current run rate yes but that that could take a little time yeah okay and uh, if you can also update on uh, status of vijak plant uh, which was i think mainly intended for european supplies and the main thing like we started uh, doing the exit batches in vijak plant as the plan and uh, the first filing is expected to be in September 23, and uh, and it is not only for uh, uh, European markets and emerging markets, and we have identified multiple products even for U.S. filing because this plant is big and we have a lot of scope for ex expansion. We wanted to use this as a global plant rather than a specific market plant, but it's on track and as per the uh, project timelines so because it's all almost uh, all the lines are up and running and we started doing the products okay thank you and my last question is uh, if you can comment on your r&d spend ahead uh, how do you see uh, moving it ahead 
in coming quarters? So, uh, the main thing the R&D spend for the year was uh, something like, uh, for the quarter was something like 6.3% and the year was around 5.7%. We will be having around something like uh, 6 to 6.5% anywhere. But more than that, uh, uh, I would say we will be incurring around 400 crore per quarter is very likely irrespective of how the turnover is growing. 400 crore uh, R&D spend? Per quarter. quarter. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is from Kunal Damesha. Hi, good morning. Thank you for taking my question. So first on the, uh, the PENGI PLI scheme, uh, would you provide some update as to, uh, um, you know, what would be, how cost competitive we would be, uh, versus let's say the Chinese players and, uh, what kind of uh, scenarios you would have assumed, uh, while going, uh, for this plant in terms of pricing right now, it kind of remains high. Uh, but do we expect it to, um, you know, become more competitive uh, once you enter the market? Kunal, I think this question has been raised in the last quarter, wherein I clearly said we will be able to give a picture uh, only in the month of November. There is no point in guessing a price which is uh, going to happen in the month of April 24, right, mm-hmm. now. But certainly we believe with our financial uh, um, uh, metrics, etc., we believe we are very cost competitive. And uh, we will be able to withstand any of the price erosion also. So we will see it only at the time. Let's not count chicken before it touches. Sure. And then, uh, uh, you know, on the U.S. price erosion, you uh, said in your opening remark, it has kind of stabilized, um, you know, normal C has returned. Uh, but would you be able to quantify what kind of price erosion we saw in the quarter, um, um, you know, on a sequential basis or a year-on-year basis? That would be helpful. Um, yeah. Uh, hi, hi, Kunal. Um, on the hi. U.S. price erosion, um, on uh, if you're asked for year-on-year basis, you know, first three quarters we had uh, fair amount of price erosion, and then uh, the fourth quarter was uh, somewhat stable, and we see the continuity. Uh, we are right now doing. I think we are pretty stable. I would say. Um, so if you talk about year-on-year, yes, it was. Uh, First three quarters were fairly high, and I don't want to hazard a guess exactly how it is because uh, we we had some changes in the fourth quarters, and then we we had requested some changes. So overall, net net, I would uh, think we are in a better position today. Uh, that's what I would like to say. And today we are pretty stable. And and uh, uh, let's say uh, the trend that you saw in quarter four uh, would that have continued in April and May as well? Yes. Sure, perfect. I have more questions. I'll join back there. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from Neha Manpuria. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Uh, Swami, sir, on the U.S. oral solid business, you know, despite the fact that uh, pricing erosion has normalized, um, you know, stabilized, as you mentioned, we have seen launches, uh, data shows that Orbindo is gaining share in a lot of the disrupted products. We haven't seen the commensurate increase in revenue in oral solid. Uh, So, you know, could you give us some color there? Do we expect more of this to reflect going forward? Um, You know, because it's pretty much flat. I think it is up 1% quarter on quarter. Sure. Yeah, yes, they had. So the, the, you know, the fourth quarter was, uh, uh, that's when we got some of the awards and, um, we have ramped up, uh, some of the supplies. I think we would see more of this starting this Q1. And I think the impact would be more in the Q2, uh, timeframe. So the, you know, the, the quick, um, the, the way we, uh, even though we got the awards, we to, do a quick turnaround, it'd be a little difficult for, especially for the kind of product that we got. Uh, we did see some surge in terms of, uh, sales, but, uh, it's not, um, you know, it's not completely reflected, I would say, based on the award that we received. So, uh, you saying the bulk of the benefit of the incremental volumes that we've been awarded will be seen in the second quarter, not even in the first quarter? First quarter, we would have some. And then okay. it would continue from there. 
That's what okay. we say. And, uh, if you recall in the last uh, two earnings call also, we mentioned that we're also launching some of the newer products. Um, so the, the new products should also contribute to our uh, top line hmm. in the next 12 months. Got it. Uh, and sir, overall on the market environment in the US, uh, you know, do you think, uh, you know, this, uh, the, these NBO opportunities as we call them is more short term or do you see this being, uh, you know, slightly more part of the base business and not necessarily a one time opportunity? How, how would you see the environment? So, you know, uh, the, the one time opportunities are one time opportunities that I will cleave apart from, uh, the NBOs, NBOs have been pretty decent and uh, I would, uh, I would not assume that these are uh, short term. I would assume that these are medium term. I think the customers are looking for stable supplies and uh, we have been able to provide them that. Got it, got it. Thank you so much. Uh, and um, so, was there on the gross margins, uh, you know, despite the fact that price erosion has stabilized, um, you know, uh, it, uh, the ARV sales are lower, injectable sales are higher. We didn't see a gross margin improvement in the quarter, uh, you know, and we had the PLI benefit. Uh, so, you know, it, was there any factor impacting gross margins? Yeah, we had certain uh, one-off items which has reflected, uh, reduced the top line item because of... Uh, some clawback taxes in some of the European countries, which has really reduced the overall uh, gross margin, sales as well as the gross margin. And this is also one of the reasons. From a EBITDA margin perspective also, we have taken some one-off write of around 20 crores. So that also taken overall, if you really see around 45 to 50 crores is the thing, one-off items we have taken during the quarter. Uh, sorry, sir, I missed the number. 40 to 45 crores. 45 to 50 crores is the one-off items we have taken during the quarter. This is both on the cost and the revenue. Yeah, both on the cost and on the revenue, maybe in equal proportion, not 30, 20 times. Okay, got it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from Prakash Agarwal. Yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, this question on outlook, actually, I mean, last two years, obviously, I mean, a lot has happened. Growth has come down. Gross margins have come down. And so are the beta margins. Uh, multiple factors. So U.S. pricing pressure, some U.S. FD issues, uh, you know. Uh, so how do you think the, you know, next couple of years will shape up? Uh, what are the big building blocks? Uh, you know, if you can share which segment in uh, your differentiated R&D assets will start coming out first and how do you see the margin trajectory? So I'll give the broad uh, direction and my colleagues will be able to explain in the uh, detail. Swami has already explained that is expected to sales is expected to move in the first quarter followed by second quarter also. If you really first quarter and second quarter the the sales are going to increase, right? If you go into third quarter, fourth quarter, I, uh, Mr. Yugendar has already said in the last meeting itself that he will be launching Revlamide, which is also going to contribute to that. And uh, next year, if you really see starting April onwards, uh, this is uh, Q3 and Q4. And probably Q4, some biosimilar product may be get launched. And next year, by April quarter onwards, you can start seeing the PNG started delivering, right? That is also there. And uh, plus, we are also started seeing the biosimilar some more. Uh, I mean, it's a full year impact started coming rather than some one or two quarters. I mean, one quarter impact of this year. So I would request uh, you guys and another team colleagues to explain in detail. I think, Sabu, you covered it most of the things uh, from generic injectables, which is under the UGR. Uh, we will continue to grow uh, and our endeavor is to grow. Uh, double digit and uh, we will keep Revlimid as one off and that we will count as over and above the base business for the next three years uh, but uh, the base business with the slew of uh, launches and uh, fightings we expect quarter on quarter uh, we should have at least uh, five approvals and five launches we just wanted to do 20 launches a year uh, going forward uh, every year, and that should provide us that uh, double-digit growth. And we will keep Revlimid as uh, a one-off opportunity. 
so you are saying base business us you are expecting double digit growth in that's fiscal, right fiscal 24 and 25 on that's a, right on a large base that's right that is for the ugr business which is the generic injectable business yeah no no us generic business i was asking that's right that is for the injectables uh, and the specialty products which is 81 million for this quarter which i explained in the script yeah yeah no i, I just little color on the us generic business x injectable will also help sir sure Swami, would uh, you like to take it yeah yeah, yeah i'm just going to do that um so prakash uh, we have we talked about uh, new products coming um, being commercialized during the current fiscal um all that i can say is that we would have steady growth uh, we anticipate uh, about 40 ndas to be um, commercialized during the year that's a fairly conservative number and that would add uh, decent amount of uh, dollars to the top line uh, and i think we would consistently at least for the next uh, few quarters you would see this kind of um, product being commercialized um from after the business approvals that we are expected to receive you know so approvals we are still getting a lot sir i'm just trying to understand little quantitative idea also that with this high base can we expect high single digit or at least mid single digit growth on the us generic base business or or given the erosion and the state the us generic market is that will be difficult or with the r&d pipeline we can manage so all that i can say is uh, price has stabilized we are able to ramp up volume there's a good demand um, so on a overall basis i think we should see a pretty decent demand i don't want to put a number to it but i think it will be uh, uh, fairly decent it will be probably the uh, higher single digits uh that's 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 something we expect um and then uh, we we don't uh, we are very optimistic about it okay thank you and subhu sir for you on the margins if you could give some qualitative no, i think uh, before that if i request uh, sakarni to talk about his launches etc because that is also going to make a impact on the overall margin profile improving in the coming years sure for to sakarni yeah hi hi uh, prakash so um continuing our um, journey to build on a differentiated portfolio one of the key elements to us um, to achieve a margin enhancement in future um, and also sustainable growth is bringing in biosimilars into the uh, regulated market so uh, we are fairly confident that towards uh, the end of this year uh, we will have at least uh, one product um in the market next year we see at least two to three products in the european market with our first filing happening in the us market so i really see the inflection point for biosimilars to start from 25 26 um the amount of um effort that had gone into conducting these clinical trials for biosimilars we have a robust uh portfolio of biosimilars as we talk now we have two product filings which were already made with european medicines agency we had uh, three product filings made with the mhra in the uk and uh, we have two product filings with health canada i expect the regulatory procedures and the procedural nuances to conclude any time uh, between q2 of this year to the q2 of the next year um that will uh, uh, bring in a series of uh, launches in a, in a re- in regulated markets now staying on the same subject um uh, and and continuing my guidance for the last three quarters in the earnings calls to now um i am happy to state that uh, we have completed uh, the treatment phase of uh, trial in 690 metastatic breast cancer subjects of a trastuzumab biosimilar biosimilar to herceptin where uh, our test product was tested for efficacy safety and immunogenicity versus the novators herceptin um after the completion of treatment phase and after initial read of the raw data 
uh, we are confident that the study, uh, which is a three-year-long study, has achieved a similar objective response rate to that of the innovators product uh, uh, in women with positive HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. We are confident that the filing process um, in emerging markets will begin in June, July. The first filing will happen in India. We will file with European Medicines Agency by September, and we will file uh, with the US FDA by quarter four. Um, we are prioritizing the filing of this uh, very important life-saving biologic biosimilar in India with an aspiration uh, uh, to launch it in our country uh, this year. We believe uh, uh, that more women will benefit from this life-saving uh, oncology therapy on the back of such extensive clinical data uh, uh, in 690 uh, patients usually not heard of in, in, in submissions that are done domestically. We believe this will give the oncologists and the patients an access to a good and reliable uh, cancer therapy option uh, for treating our women, our mothers and sisters. So this is my update on uh, trastuzumab. Likewise, um, um, as, as the discussions on differentiated portfolio, for, portfolio um, as the filing process for our oncology biosimilar across markets is uh, uh, slated to begin, uh, we are showing signs of advancing uh, our differentiated portfolio to various autoimmune diseases. Um, autoimmune diseases is a huge market in the U.S. Um, I am pleased to state that a full-fledged global phase three clinical trial of a biosimilar to Jolair, we are, we are announcing the name of the biosimilar for the first time, uh, the phase three clinical trial of biosimilar to Jolair, which is map, has begun as our trial sites are being readied now and our subject recruitment is ongoing. Uh, the patent expires in US in November 2025. We have followed the due process of submitting the clinical trial plan um, and application for our biosimilar candidate. Um, and we hope that this phase three clinical trial, which is a comparative study, on the efficacy, uh, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, safety, and immunogenicity, uh, which is being conducted in 600 subjects with chronic spontaneous urticaria. The reason why I bring this up is to tie in this discussion with what Swami is saying. The Acrotech Biopharma, which is our brand business in the U.S., is investing in dermatology. Now, if you look at our biosimilars and how we are positioning them in immunology and autoimmune diseases, this adds to our commercial front end and the business that we are uh, establishing and nurturing in the U.S. with a long-term view to, to increase margins and to sustain our margins in this business. We believe that this biosimilar presents a, a sizable opportunity uh, in a potential market of $4 billion U.S. dollars uh, with very limited biosimilars competition. It is our intent to file uh, this product in 2025 just in time uh, uh, maybe two quarters ahead of the formulation patent that expires in U.S. in 2025. Um, further, to stay on the differentiated portfolio, we are strengthening our uh, immunology pipeline competitiveness in the autoimmune uh, therapy segment by kicking off a phase one three-arm PKPD safety study of another biosimilar aimed at treating osteoporosis. This is also immunology biosimilar. This will also fit very well into the portfolio in both our U.S. and European commercial front end teams. Um, a phase three clinical trial application for this product is being submitted as we talk this week to European Medicines Agency, and we are gearing up to initiate a phase three trial by Q3 of this year. Likewise, a third immunology biosimilar, again, a strong focus of the entire company on differentiated portfolio, has already begun a phase three clinical trial where we completed around 40% of the recruitment already. We plan to file this product in the next fiscal year in India and emerging markets to start with. So uh, to answer your question, uh, uh, overall as a company and as, as biosimilars, we are, we are, we are nurturing our R&D so that we can sustain our business in the future, um, um, especially with an eye on the regulated markets, Europe and US. Prakash. I hope this answers. This is very elaborate. Thank you so much. And some color on the margins will also help. It will be too early to... to the uh, overall uh, company uh, level, sir. Uh, then Subhu would answer that. Subhu? The overall company level, uh, Prakash, if you really see last quarter, we ended with around 15.5. 
certainly we will not be limping but certainly we will go in a incremental fashion probably uh, i don't think a, a step jump approach will happen this year right so incrementally probably we may be mid between i mean we we may not touch 20 but could be midpoint in this year is your my feeling okay okay thank you very much and all the best thank you the next question is from Shram, Shyam Srinivasan. Yeah, uh, good morning and thank you for taking my question. Uh, just the first one on the UGA, just what is the full year number now for the revenue? I think 81 million per quarter also has some global part, which is non-US, I assume. And that is for the quarter. So what's the full year number? And uh, did I miss it in terms of the guidance that we're talking about, ten double-digit growth? Uh, so the 650, 700 million would that come with the uh, uh, generic rev limit on top? Is that how, sorry, if you can help us uh, reconcile with the past on how we were thinking about this business? So even though like we don't give uh, uh, specific uh, numbers on UGA, but I'll just give you a proper guidance in terms of we closed around 3,300 crores of top line, which is roughly around $411 million this year. This is a flat growth compared to FI22. But we didn't decline. Okay. In fact, in a challenging environment, uh, we could be able to uh, grow a single digit. And uh, going forward, I'm guiding based on the current pipeline, what we have, that we will continue on this 3,300 crores of base. We will continue our journey of double digit growth. And on top of it, revenue will get added. That's how it is here. Got it, Mr. Uganda. So just uh, help us understand on the base business, uh, you're talking about launches, like you said, 20 launches, I think, in your previous comment. So right. just, want, just want to understand uh, how is the, I think we've uh, got a lot of questions on the oral solid side of things on price erosion, but what is happening on generic injectables? Anything that you can comment? What explains the flattish growth? Um, right? I'm still assuming OSD is a very small percentage of your overall thing and largely injectable. So just help us understand pricing environment on the generic injectable side. Yeah, I'm like first two quarters of FI23 were really like challenging. And I think uh, the first time when the market opened up post COVID uh, in the Q1, Q2 of last financial year, which is FI23, uh, we had almost a double digit price decline, which was unseen, unheard in a injectable and a speciality business. But from quarter three onwards, things have stabilized. And right now, the competitive environment is, I think, let me put it this way, that we are in a good footing with respect to the competitive environment is concerned. And uh, last two quarters, the pricing has been almost, uh, decline has been almost negligible. And that is what we feel that going forward with, and also uh, one more thing which is helping us is, in terms of, uh, I, unfortunately, the drug shortages in the U.S. are at the highest level in its history. Mm -hmm. And all these things, and on top of it, a uh, slew of launches will help us grow the business. And uh, we, uh, as guided earlier, our gas margins in Asia should be between 60 to 70, and EBITDA levels will be around 25 to 35. It's a broad range. Uh, okay, one quarter we might be here, one quarter we might be there, depending on how launches will shape up. But it's an insist a follow up on Revlimid. Uh, you know, is there anything that you've disclosed in terms of the timeline for the launch? Uh, how large it is uh, will likely be for you in terms of because it's a crowded space. Um, you know, is there still elbow room for everyone? Six, seven, eight players now, right? So just want to understand your thoughts on generic Revlimid. In generic travel limit, we already secured the final approval. As per the settlement, we'll be launching in October. But uh, as uh, we cannot disclose the percentage of settlement, uh, so I will leave it there. It won't be a significant part of my revenue. It will be like a pretty good uh, bottom line for my business. And uh, as it is, as you know, that like this is going to be limited share for multiple players. So we expect the price pricings to be stable and it doesn't matter before 
Jan 2026, whoever a number of launches happen might happen. And but like only thing is we don't expect uh, because each player is will be restricted by the percentage of share, like share what we settled for, and we expect the pricing to be stable up to Jan 2026. got it so last question uh, is in growth markets i think we have seen a good bump up there uh, 18 19% quarter on quarter growth uh, so what is driving some of this growth is it sustainable i think 9% now is domestic formulations in india so it's some cal- qualitative color on that business thank you i already said in the opening remarks itself uh, this quarter we have got a good pla uh, i mean incentive for around 48 crores against last quarter eight. Well, basically the incentive is depending upon the eligible products which have been approved by the ministry and this quarter the sales of the eligible products have picked up a lot and because of that we got this uh, 40 crore and which has helped to take it but still we are in line with the overall number of around uh, whatever be the number agreed with the ministry and it is the number which has been reckoned actually So, 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 so you class you class you classify uh, the PLI income as domestic form is the, sorry i i was yeah because it is it is only for the indian subsidiaries they don't give it achieve, achieved by the indian subsidiaries they don't give it for the uh, us or any other foreign countries sales achieved in other foreign countries only for domestic or it's our last follow up sorry if i may quickly when you're talking about mid teens margin are we talking quart exit quarter or full year fiscal 24 thank you you are asking again the no no i am asking you sir when you talk about uh, between 15 and a half and 20% you talked about the margins being that are we looking at an on a quarterly exit basis are we looking at full year fiscal 24 ebitda margins thank you i think uh, i have taken it only a quarterly basis because uh, we do not know at this stage as you have clearly pointed out the development will happen only in the quarter q3 which will have a significant addition to the bottom line at this stage i am not talking about uh, i am saying moving on excluding the development etc we should be mid in midpoint between current and 20% that's what i feel at this stage we will see this in next quarter yeah every quarter we will review this thank you The next question is from Tarun. Hi, uh, good morning. I have three questions. Uh, one, uh, Subhas so, sir, you in your opening commentary, you suggested that uh, the free cash generation for the business would uh, perhaps begin from FY twenty seven. I was just curious in terms of uh, FY. I said FY twenty five, not FY twenty seven. Okay. Oh, my, Because my bad. Penji, yeah, yeah. The Penji. My bad. My bad. Yeah, Penji plan and, will be completed by uh, March 24. By the time we would have incurred most of the capex, and there is no big project which we are thinking of as on date of this size or magnitude to incur in the couple of years, right? And the Penji should give good cash generation, right? So because of various factors, I feel there is will be a good cash generation starting next year onwards. I understand. So I misheard it for FY27. Apologies, uh, uh, Dr. Satkarni on biosimilars and peptides. One, if you could give us a sense on the status of regulatory inspections, and second, some sense on what's happening on peptides. So, um, Tarang Hai, um, on the regulatory inspections, uh, I gave you guidance in the last earnings call uh, that we are. the two filings that we had um with ema um we are expecting a regulatory inspection which which had happened and we are waiting for a formal uh, report of the pre commercial audit or the inspection from emia uh, we believe this will become part of the day 80 clock stop procedure and response from ema so we are expecting that um with the delay in the audit let me also give you a guidance because we have submitted this file uh, last year we have we are close to exhausting the time on the procedural clock stop uh, that ema or chmp allows us we have a clock stop until june 20th so once we receive the draft observations 
uh, of 180 uh, GMP inspection from the agency. We will have to work with CHMP on the way forward and how can we provide any additional data if they require uh, within the time frame allowed uh, uh, by the clock stop for the procedure. Now, this is the guidance on EMEA inspection. Now, with Health Canada, um, I told you last time that we are expecting a Health Canada inspection. The review process of our products had begun. So we were expecting an on-site evaluation as communicated by Health Canada. But because of the uh, paucity of the auditors, the auditors have pushed the dates back. Uh, we are expecting now the Health Canada audit inspection to coincide with the review procedure, uh, which is around November. So that's my expectation. But again, I am preempting. I need to, I need to, uh, uh, I need to talk with Health Canada over a period of next two, three months, engage with them as the review procedure unfolds to see when I can have the inspection from Health Canada. With MHRA, unfortunately, with all the three filings that we had, uh, for example, with one, one of our monoclonal antibody filing, we have concluded day 150, which is at the point of approval, and we still did not get any inspection date from MHRA. We are following it up with them. So this is about uh, uh, the update on the uh, uh, inspections. What was your second question, Taran? Status on uh, peptides. On the peptides, um, as I told you, uh, we are now uh, focusing on two majority segments in peptides API development, uh, which is essentially oncology peptides and uh, 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 anti-diabetology peptides. Um, so uh, last October, uh, if I did not give this guidance earlier, we have filed a drug master file for liraglutide, uh, which is now active, the DMF. Uh, we are hoping to file uh, DMF for another GLP-1 analog by the end of this year uh, uh, also. So I'm, I'm reasonably pleased with uh, how the peptides business is shaping up. It is also contributing to, to say, UGS injectables. I think we have two ANDAs approved uh, uh, this year. Yugandhar may correct it. Um, may, may, may give you the right picture. So we are, I'm, I'm convinced about uh, how we are working on peptides and the focus that we have on um, diabetology and oncology segments in peptides. That's helpful. Thank you. The third question to uh, Swami, sir. Sir, just wanted to get a sense. Uh, uh, today, about 774 NDS filed. I mean, in your view, what will be Aurobindo's coverage uh, for the generic market in the U.S.? Uh, just to get a sense, because my sense is by volumes, you're probably the largest dispenser. So I just wanted to get a sense on how big the uncovered market is for you and how should we see this number uh, moving forward over the next two, three years? So um, if you talk about the approvals, if you talk about the potential, yes, there is a fair amount of uncovered market. Uh, today we are covered, covered the market to the extent uh, we can and we are launching new products. Um, so the priorities change depending on the um, profitability of the product and then uh, how quickly we can do this product. I think there is a lot of scope for uh, coverage. That's all I would like to say at this point. Even today we have a uh, number of approvals that uh, we are in the process of launching. Uh, month after month we have launches. Um, so it would be at this point, I can only tell you that uh, we have a fair amount of market that we have not covered yet. Would it be more than 50%, the uncovered market? I, I, I wouldn't hazard that guess, but, uh, you know, on the overall term, we, you know, we are the largest. I would not put such a high, uh, high percentage. Um, all that I can tell you is uh, we have uncovered market. Today we are a large player. Obviously, being a large player, uh, you cannot compound a growth with a huge percentage. But I think we have a fair amount of uh, market to be covered. Okay. That's all. Sir. Thank you. All the I best. would request everyone to ask only one question because quite a lot of people are waiting. And restrict to one question, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Nitin Agarwal. Hi, thanks for taking my question. 
Uh, sir, on the uh, if you can provide any more color on on our uh, plans and outlook for the Chinese uh, Chinese business, given the fact that you said the plan should be in place by next year sometime. Yeah, we'll be doing initially. We'll be I think uh, as we said, we have more or less installed the plant and we have been doing the exhibit batches. We have filed around five products from the China plant, and uh, uh, we'll be starting with the European uh, dispatcher because it takes quite a lot of time. to get the approval regulatory approval from the chinese uh, regulators so we'll be starting with the european manufacturing since starting uh, first quarter fy25 that is uh, april next year followed with uh, probably by third quarter or fourth quarter for the chinese market so this is our plan for the chinese plan china plan and sir on the products for that you looking to file from this facility are these the uh, injectables these are inhalers or what what is the no as of now we are doing only the oils these okay sir. okay thank you sir. thank you the next question is from binu hi um good morning and good evening um just a clarification on the capex um on tli so far you have spent about 120 million dollars how much of that would be for the penji pro- project entirely for the penji plant no it's entirely penji plant okay yeah, yeah, and yeah. how much how much more will will be um uh, will be done in this year for penji i think this year means fy24 if i'm right correct 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 so we need to co- as i said no my most of the capex will be done by fy24 that mean penji project as on date it is estimated around 250 to 265% plus or minus contingency right so that much of amount will be spent by end of the year that means another 130 million would be spent this year 130 to 140 million will be spent this year understood okay and uh, right. any uh, any mm-hmm. significant capex uh, planned in biosimilars for this year no uh, there is see already the plan for biosimilars is in place already as we informed to the, uh, the exchange sometime back in october we want to put one uh, uh, unit uh, which we will take we have already informed but the timing wise sarkarni will decide when to start that plan but that may not be a very big plant like 2000 crore and see must be around uh, 300 400 crores only that is understood okay and all put together what would be the total capex for fy24 see as i said no the maintenance capex uh, will be very less in terms it will be around uh, 125 120 to 130 million dollars the existing plants capex any new products new market etc which is going to give a return in terms of the new turnover new profits everything that will be uh, depending upon what we close it by end of the year that could be anywhere uh, maybe a, i mean i'm just guessing anywhere between 7500 dollars like that see i think it's too early because our objective is to complete the existing projects right that is right right Perfect. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from Surya. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my specific question about uh, you know, this thing is that uh, it's uh, about the UCA is that uh, so after doing all this integration and all, uh, what all means what kind of uh, benefit of integration that you have started witnessing and uh, how is that going to help you uh, incrementally going ahead that is one and just uh, if you can also clarify a bit on the penji see having seen um, the kind of uh, uh, changed price dynamic in price as well as demand dynamic in recent past uh, how has that uh, changed your uh, potential as well as outlook for the project and uh, uh, starting from which pay, which month or which quarter or which period that you are expecting contribution from the pnj project so as i said no it is uh, expected from q1 20 i mean uh, fy25 that is april 24 onwards uh, we need to start generating the revenue from that project how fast the ramp up can take place etc we will able to tell only in the november or maybe in february quarter right it is in the process of installation the installation is likely to complete 
only by October, November, and then after that we will do some pilot batches and other thing to ensure the product is coming out successfully, right? Yes. So that is the thing. In terms of the demand forecast, etc., we don't need to guess for a product which is going to be launched down the line one year right now itself. Maybe we'll address it maybe at a later date. Okay. Mm, okay. Sure, sir. Uh, regards uh, the integration benefits of for this UGR. Uh, putting all the assets, uh, relevant assets into that, and uh, 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 the integration led advantage. What is that you are trying to see going ahead? If you can talk about your guns. As you said in the stock exchange, it's a notification. It's a, the purpose of it to bring uh, focused uh, management to improve the performance, which second, uh, uh, which. Uh, Yuvendra has been explaining, explaining very nicely what is his plan, double digit growth and other things. Those are all the thing and also to have a control on the quality standards. Mm -hmm. So that is the thing. Probably you guys me, you may like to add more. No, basically, sir, I, I yeah. just wanted to have a sense about uh, the, uh, the contribution at the margin level or the profitability level because many of the asset would be also, uh, 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 seeing uh, developmental cost and all that, which is uh, currently and uh, may not be compensated by incremental revenue. That is one. And uh, even the two injectable facility, what we have been building up one in US, one in India. So uh, when are they likely to contribute incrementally? So see uh, this, this segment, how should it uh, really be contributing to the overall profit or margin improvement of the company? See, I think, Surya, uh, the answer has already been given by Yugendar very clearly. He said very clearly he will grow the business, based business, existing business by double digit. And he also said development will be over in addition to that. He said there is a significant profit will addition in the profit will come from development. He said that. Plus, he also said that what are all the new projects on Vizac plant, etc. when he is going to launch. I think... Uh, all the questions which you have been asked being answered already very in an in, in informal way. You can there given you all answers. What is the uh, EBITDA margin, etc. Band also you have given, right? Okay. So then, sir, so specifically, if you can just uh, indicate, uh, let's say, what is the kind of a uh, cash fund that we are seeing because of the kind of uh, uh, initial activities, developmental activities, one and. Uh, when incrementally this uh, U.S. plant is likely to see the revenue because that is currently possible in the filing stage, right? Yeah, that even that can answer it. Yeah, it is in the filing stage. We already did the first filing. Uh, so we have plans to do around five, six filings from that plant during this uh, fiscal. And in case if FDA triggers the audit, uh, it will get commercialized in FI-25. Uh, in okay. case if the FDA delays the audit, we don't know. But uh, we, our anticipation at this point is that uh, in FI 25, this um, uh, plan should get commercialized. Okay. Uh, and uh, the India plant is a FI 26 opportunity, sir. Injectable. It is plan. also. It is also will be FI 25, not FI 26. The visa. See, I have uh, four commercial plants under UGA. And two new plants. One plant is in Visag and one plant is in US. These are the two non-commercial plants. We yes. expect both uh, both these two new plants to be de de delivering some revenue starting from FI25. Okay. Yeah, sure, sir. Yeah, yeah. thank Ms. you. Next, yeah. Thank you. The next question is from Vishal Manchanda. Is not there, Mr. Pune Pujara. Hello, am I audible? This is Vishal Manchanda. Yeah. Uh, hi. So my question is: uh, uh, Have we witnessed any failure to supply penalties during the year? Tommy, so failure to supply is uh, normal commercial practice um, that uh, we. The suppliers generally get into failure to supply. Uh, you know, there are some, several types. One is the service level penalty. Other one is actual failure to supply. 
So all this comes into the broad uh, gamut of affiliate supply. Uh, we do that have as a practice and uh, we do incur that. So uh, can you kind of share whether it was higher YOY or it was not, uh, it, the trend is uh, broadly, the, broadly similar on a YOY basis? You see, uh, it's too early to say um, how exactly it has um, panned out because first and foremost for the last year, there were many customers who did not, uh, who gave some kind of uh, leeway because it was post-COVID and there were other issues. Uh, so it's not comparable. That's number one. Number two, if there's a failure to supply, it doesn't mean that you're actually going to pay that kind of money uh, because you are going to contest it. He would give you a failure to supply on a product that you don't supply to him at all, which you supplied two years back or, uh, you know. So these are all questions. It gets uh, normally settled after a point of time. But yes, there, there could be failure to supply and this is a normal commercial practice. Our idea is to try and control it to the extent we can. Got it. So you provide for it in your numbers? Yes, absolutely. Got it. Uh, at least just one yes. more. Uh, yeah. There are other three people waiting, Mr. Vishal, if you don't okay. mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Puneet Pujara. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so my questions are for Dr. Satkani. Now I understand you are uh, developing a global biosimilars portfolio, but my questions are just for the US part of it. Uh, first question is, uh, do you think it makes sense to incur additional cost for say interchangeability, not for the uh, currently filed products, but the products that you'll file uh, later on? Uh, that's first. And second, uh, uh, what are your thoughts around, you know, the regulatory framework around the interchangeability converging with what we have in the European market? Uh, these are my questions. Um, Puneet, it's a good question. It actually requires a huge discussion because the regulators, the policymakers, and the industry is engaged in a major debate across the regulated markets. But I will try and give my perspective and Aurobindo's perspective on interchangeability. One, I think going by what is happening in other regulated markets, um, if you see what I have predicted before, interchangeability as a scientific norm doesn't make any sense for biosimilars. Okay, so it is. it has been my policy that I would not invest in any interchangeability clinical trials for the time being um, I, because I believe um, as Europe and MHRA has shown the way, going forward, maybe towards the end of this decade, interchangeability as a concept for clinical, additional clinical trial will be nullified even at the US FDA. Now, this is my personal opinion and the opinion on which Curatech designs its clinical trial. What is interchangeability's relevance in biosimilars? Um, there is a good debate. There is a bad debate around it. Uh, the good debate is that in chronic segment, when I say chronic segment, where a patient uh, users has to use a drug for a longer period of time. Say, for example, in diabetes, you are using an insulin. So the patient should be armed with an interchangeable data so that he can confidently switch from one drug to another drug. Now, by definition, we don't agree it as scientists because by definition, biosimilar is in, in all means a similar to a innovative biologic. Now, again, after Proving residual uncertainty, uh, after proving that there is no residual uncertainty and proving totality of evidence through a stage-wise development that is doing preclinical trials, analytical biosimilarity, phase 1 PKPD, and phase 3 safety, efficacy, and immunogenicity trials, why is there an additional need to show interchangeability is the question that industry is asking. Now, this has been widely accepted already, and you are seeing signs of it in countries like Canada, Europe, etc., I think U.S. will also follow suit. So in the nutshell, at Aurobindo and Curatech, I don't do any interchangeability trials for my biosimilars. I don't think it will significantly impact me in the market, maybe in the first two, three years, because I have to always create a new customer base and, and I will not be able to switch the old customers into my product. But towards the end of this decade, I believe interchangeability as a definition, interchangeability as a concept will die down from a requirement of doing an additional clinical trial. I hope that answers. 
So that's very helpful. Thanks. I'll join back with you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Alankar. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so just one question. A uh, couple of quarters back, uh, you had spoken about the possibility of uh, some kind of buyback or, or higher dividends. Uh, so just wanted to check, uh, are we still thinking on those lines? Uh, any update on that, please? So this is a good question. Uh, it is uh, being, uh, we are discussing that, but the timing-wise, it has not been decided because we are embarking on this uh, PNG project accelerated thing. And also we were looking at the possibility of moving the cash, which is available in various parts of the country, various parts of the globe, especially Euro, we are sitting on around $200 million cash, but the exchange rates are not very conducive to bring it at this stage. So we are working on all these things so that we will be able to ensure that we are optimizing the entire thing. Probably we may do it at some point of time when board only will know. Got it. Sir. Thank you. Uh, give me a second. This is Satukarni. I would go back to Puneet and leave a punchline. Puneet, by definition, we at Arabindo Kuratic believe all biosimilars should be interchangeable. I will, I will leave with that thought. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Thank you all for joining us on the call today. If you have any of your questions unanswered, please feel free to keep in touch with the investor relations team. The transcript of this call will be uploaded on our website, www.orobindo.com in due course. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Pharma. That concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines and exit the webinar. Thank, Thank you. you.